Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, supportive vermicomposting community, you are in the right place. Today we're going to look and talk about worm escapes and why they do it and how you can maybe prevent it. We're looking in on my African night crawlers, which are my most notorious crawlers. I came in yesterday morning to discover probably about a hundred of them, little ones, on the floor. And so one of the reasons that I know that mine do it is because of the change in weather. We went from about 80 degrees Fahrenheit to 20 degrees over the course of three days, and we've also had some very big storms. Put in the comments below, do you have any problems with worms crawling out of your worm bin? And if so, what do you do about it? Okay, let's take a look at these guys. So I actually took, I'll put the pictures in there, but I actually had to take them off the sides uh, it, only the little ones escaped because they were the only ones that could get in between the little lock and key of a zipper. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move everything over. I haven't looked in on this bin for about four weeks. Uh, we gave them a really good feeding last time. So they should have had more than enough food considering the, all the bedding and carbon that I try and give these guys. So let's take a look and see what we've got. Um, what I do know is that I am now down by a couple hundred worms at least. So as I go down a little bit deeper, the moisture is just fine. So they did not jump out because of too much moisture. And uh, after not being fed, they definitely were not escaping because they had too much food and it was overheating for them. So in my case, this is the only explanation that I can come you know, to, for why they jumped out of my bin. So as we're going around, we can see that the furnace has started to kick on. So the edges of the bin are getting a little bit dry. So as I'm finding worms, I'm gonna stick them closer to the middle. But these guys have definitely gone through all of their bedding, except for the stuff that was right on top. And uh, that means that they are ready for a good amount of food and then also a good amount of bedding. Let's see, do we have anything inside of this stalk? Nope, that's interesting. A couple roly polies, but other than that, nothing, nothing in there. That was a, a cabbage or a broccoli. You can tell they've gotten in all this one and turned. Okay, well, We've seen that they're escaping due to um, basically change in weather. It got colder, and not only that, it uh, the pressure, you know, the atmospheric pressure goes up and down as you get storms and sunny days. So um, I'm sure that if I did not have this zipped bag, I would have lost a great deal more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put all of the food over on one side here, considering that they're already kind of stressed out. I don't want to freak them out anymore by possibly putting food in the middle. I'm going to give them an opportunity to come to the food whenever they want to. So let me grab their food. So that is a pretty good size feeding. Um, you've got some tomatoes and onions and pineapple and a big avocado shell and a big avocado pit, some tea bags, some green tomatoes, a couple of oranges. Um, none of this is gonna make them run away. They have a huge bed here. I'll put the dimensions down below, but they have a very, very big bed here. So if this were to overheat or whatever on this side, they have more than enough real estate over here to get away from it. And that is one of the most important things when you uh, are getting started in the worm business is that you have to consider what are, all the, what are the worms gonna do? And in the case of these worms, uh, African night crawlers, I have them in a zip bag because what they do is they try and escape on me. So I'm gonna take all of that food and all of that extra bedding from over there and I am going to lump that up on top of the new food and then I'm gonna give them some new bedding over here and I think I'm gonna give them a little bit of extra water over the top of the food to make sure, now that the furnace is kicking on, that I'm not going to have any problems with them drying out. This bedding has been aging for well over a month, so it should be almost like baby food to the worms. They should be able to get into this with no problem. And 
And so that'll be nice and moist for them. They can hang out in there. And this will be pre-eaten or pre-digested a little bit by the microbes that I put in the bedding. If you want to know about how I make my bedding, I can put a link right above here. Now let's get them some water for this side. Now I do have a little sprinkler head that I usually use, but I don't know where it's at right now. So I'm just going to be real careful. This is room temperature water that um, has been dechlorinated. It was tap water is what I'm trying to say. Where I live, uh, they do have chlorine and chloranamine, so I do recommend that if you live in a similar city type situation, that you do use the same drops that you use on water that you add to a fish tank. That will clear up that uh, chlorine and chloranamine right away. Um, just as a note, if you are going to listen to other people and they say that you can just let it out for a couple, three days, that only works with chlorine. It does not work with chloranamine. So check, you can get online and look up your name of your city and go to the water department and see what they treat your water with. And if it does have just chlorine, you can just let your water sit out. Otherwise, you do need to either use uh, some sort of a filtered water or um, use the drops. And I do have those in the link below on my Amazon links. So I'm gonna add about a gallon of water to this. This is a very big bin. And the furnace has really started to kick on, as you can imagine, with it being about 10 degrees below freezing here. And so that should make these guys nice and happy. They can withstand a lot of stress so long as they have the right amount of moisture and some good bedding. So for those of you who have stayed to the end, I will give you my best tips for managing to make the worms stay in the bin. So first of all, to prevent it, you wanna make sure that there's enough moisture and that the moisture is even. That might be, if you're a new worm farmer, one of your problems with your worms escaping. Number two, if you fed all over the place and it heats up, the worms don't have anywhere to go except for out. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna kind of mitigate your feedings if you're gonna be feeding heavily because you're gonna be gone for a while. Another thing is, if you don't have a zipper top bag like I do, you can actually choose to put a very dry layer of cardboard or shredded paper on top. The worms won't wanna crawl through it because it's uncomfortable and that will, to a degree, keep your worms that are adventurous in the bin. But if you do have enough money to get a um, vermi bag, like I do here. This is called a little mammoth. This has been amazing. It is, you know, anytime that I've had the African night crawlers, I always recommend putting them in a zipper bag because it is the only way I can keep them in reliably. And even with the zipper bag, I did manage to lose a few hundred this week with the change in the seasons. One thing about the African night crawlers is that the light trick does not work. If you have European night crawlers or red wigglers, um, even blue worms. If you shine a bright light on there, the worms will stay in the bin. But African night crawlers are a little bit different. They're a different genus of worm, and the bright light does not work with them. So you really do need to have some kind of a functional barrier to keep those little critters in their bin. And safe and sound. Um, unfortunately, mine became worm jerky and cat toys, uh, which was not the intended purpose of my little worms. So if you like looking at the African night crawlers in this zipper system, go ahead and you can look at the playlist right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.